Hi everybody, my name is Alan and on behalf of the crew I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Bridging Heaven and Earth. You know, as the opening was running I could see it in the studio and I was thinking, my first thought when I was watching it was, you know, now is really the time. I mean, now meaning the middle of the year 1999 is when we're originally taping this show and we're coming into the year 2000. Now a lot of you you know, in different places of the country and world might be seeing this another time. But for us now, I was thinking, like, this is the time coming into the new millennium, coming in to, to the year 2000, when, when, when that potential is truly open for us. But then I realized that potential is open for us now. It's always been open for us, and it will continue to be open for us. And we can't afford to wait anymore to let the love manifest, to let that experience of oneness, of connectedness, of the true experience of who we are, we can't let it wait another day. We can't let it wait till Jesus gets back, Krishna, Buddha, to a guru, to a time, to anything. Now is the time. Whenever you're watching the show, now is the time for love to come. Now is the time for, for letting that love that does come, that, that is actually what you're made of, to come forth, to manifest, to bring forth with all our brothers and sisters and all our uh, co-inhabitants of this planet and the trees and the dolphins and the whales and all the, all the creatures of this planet and the planet itself to let that love manifest and now is the time. And tonight we have with us guests whose lives are dedicated to bringing that experience of love into, into that one, into the now. And so if you can sit with us for the next 58 and a half minutes, I think you'll have an experience of letting that now, that love, that truth, that reality, that oneness, that experience of connectedness between all things, where there is no separation, that will, will take us all over more and more as the show goes on. Because tonight we have a spiritual teacher, uh, Arjuna, who has written an extraordinary new book, Relaxing into Clear Seeing, that, that is sole purpose is to do that, to allow that experience to come forth even more. And then we have somebody who does it in a different way, as we normally do. We have a master musician with us tonight, Sudama, who has a new CD out by the same name, Sudama, and is a founder of this extraordinary jazz, rock, new age group called the Dreamtime Continuum. So th they're both in the studio with us tonight. And we also have as a, an extraordinary treat tonight uh, some, some friends of ours, I'll go over when, when I announce the, the video, but we're going to show a 30-second animated video that they've been showing all around the local area. Uh, an animated promo that we've been showing for the, to announce this, our seventh season. So you're going to get to see that a little later in the show tonight. So really, just whatever has happened to you before this moment, let this moment be with you now, be with us now, and just join us for the next hour or so. So as we normally do at this time to help that transition, please join me in a short meditation. Then we're going to go to Sudama. We're going to go to the 30-second video. And I think you're going to have an extraordinary experience. So please join me. Thank you. So we're going to begin tonight's show with uh, that 30-second animated promo video I was telling you about. Some friends of ours, Tom Akampora from the Technical Animation Company, worked with Lou Louis de Bourbon, who's one of the crew members here. Now tonight he's working on camera, and uh, they did the animation part. And then George Graves and Jeff Azevedo. Jeff is directing tonight's show, and George is an associate of uh, Jeff's and they did the uh, the audio for it and, and we really think it's an extraordinary piece that we've been getting just wonderful comments about so whenever we're ready in the booth and then we're gonna go to Sudama with wink and blink and nod the music from Sudama from a poem by Eugene Field and it's gonna be performed by Sudama so first the, the animated video
Wow, thank you, Santama. That was fantastic. So we're on the set here with, or I'm on the set, I don't know, I got a couple other people here with Arjuna. Welcome. Thank you. So you've, you've written this new book that's called Relaxing into Clear Seeing. What do you mean by seeing? Seeing. <clears throat> it's a, a euphemism, really. You could say relaxing into clear smelling, I guess, just as well. <laughs> do we have to stop there? No, okay. <laughs> but normally our attention, most of us, our attention is constantly tracking things that are changing. Hmm? Tracking situations that are not there, then grab attention and then disappear again. Thoughts that arise, catch our attention and then disappear, only replaced by another thought. And this is, this situation is considered to be the normal state of human consciousness. Huh? So consequently, we define ourselves, we have defined ourselves for millennia as a bundle of these thoughts and feelings and impressions. That's, for most of humankind, is all with that we know that we are. But this is, in a way, a state of hypnosis, a state of constantly tracking things that are changing in time. There's the possibility, as you spoke of beautifully in the beginning of the show, to switch the attention simply in this very moment now, not as the result of some spiritual practice later, but in this very moment now, there is the possibility to shift the attention from this changing procession of stuff to the immediate presence of that which is here experiencing all that. It can't be something later because this is being experienced now. That shifting of attention from hypnosis to wakefulness, I've called in the book Clear Seeing because, you know, a lot of these words like awakening, enlightenment, moksha, they're kind of a bit jaded now, you mm -hmm. know. Right. They've lost their sparkle. So I just made up a new one and called it clear seeing. <laughs> so it's the experience that theoretically all the masses have talked about, the experience of, of truth, of, of oneness, of transcendental experience of God. Yes. Throughout history. The wonderful thing though that, that you alluded to in your introduction is we seem to be entering now a new phase of humanity, which I don't know if it has any precedent at all in the history of the species, where the master now is no longer one person sitting in one place. The master is the meeting now. The master is the mutual gathering of intention to live. Wakefully. The collaboration yes. of love. Yes, the co beautiful. Wow, <laughs> show's over. Sorry, Sudam, your second. <laughs> the collaboration of love, yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, beautiful. we've been talking a lot about that. Yes. You know, like it's just mm. more and more people to coming together without, you mm. know, a particular path, just out of the love. Mm. And yes. then as they cross, the love like expands and then they might move on or might not move on, depending yes. on. Yes, beautiful. Yeah. Well, this is the. Um, the wonderful thing that's been unfolding. I've been traveling to different cities, actually probably more than I'd advise anyone else to do, <laughs> but I've been traveling a good deal. And I return to the same city every year or so. It's wonderful to see how people are willing now, truly willing to abandon the story of my life, mm -hmm. to abandon I am this person with these concerns, these beliefs, to, to wipe the whole altar cloth from the table, leave it, leave your altar completely clean. And this to the, to the old mind pattern seems like void or nothing. Yeah, yeah it's going to be boring. Like, it's like self-annihilation, right, right. but what actually shows up and what is showing up more and more for those who make this leap is tremendous love. And it's not like you forget like what's on your birth certificate and how to mm. drive a car. I mean, mm. people would think, you know, it's like, mm. holy Christ, so you know, mm. if I'm in that state. Mm. And it's not like that at all, right? Mm. No, actually, it, it, the, the birth certificate information is much more accessible when it's not clouded by extraneous yes. thoughts. <laughs> with all your identifications, with that name and that identity yeah. and that age and yes. all the things that keep us from experiencing clear seeing, as you would call right. it. Right, yes. The, the thing that is so staggering, you know, I just got back last week from North Carolina. The week before was Fairfield, Iowa, you know. Well, that's where Maharishi said yeah. you were there speaking. Many, many, yeah. Uh, 
You were, were you ever, you were a lot of things. I mean, I saw his biographies. This guy has been everywhere and done everything. A lot of dead ends, yes. <laughs> a lot of dead ends till I finally stopped uh, hitting my head against brick walls and just sat down where I was. Right. You know, I've been saying that to a lot of people. Right here. Yeah. Go, you know, next time you want to go travel to see some guru, lock yourself in a room yes. for as long as it takes. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Most people don't like that, actually. Mm. Well, I'll go for it. All right. <laughs> Great. Yes, these, these um, gatherings lately have really been like a celebration because the meeting is not really to come and meet a guru. The meeting is to discover that the meeting itself is guru. You know, the word... Uh, well, the journey. Yes. I mean, you don't have to get there. Right. I mean, if you don't get there, you're still in... Right. <laughs> right? Abandon I mean, the journey already here. Yeah, yes. Well, I mean, it could be looked at that way. Mm. Yeah. People would probably not... A, a lot of people... I mean, because the path looks important. Yeah. And the destination looks yes. important, yes. but is it? Yeah, well, Not if you're where you are and you're full at that moment. Well, you know, if you're in Santa Barbara, preoccupied, fixated on the idea of how to get to Santa Barbara, you're not going to enjoy Santa Barbara very much. Well, you're certainly not going to enjoy the journey, that's for sure. You <laughs> well, you're everywhere yeah. else before right. you get there. Exactly. It's, <laughs> one has to, in a way, give up seeking in order to rest. Seeking is well, the seeking last. is only like a manifestation of like mind or ego. Yes. I mean, so if you're not dealing in that realm, yes. then you, where, you, where you're going? Mm. But you'll go because you're in a physical body and movement. You know, creativity or love manifest is like creativity. So, I mean, if that love manifest will take you, you know, it mm. took us from like outside in the green room, say, mm. to this room. Mm. And then, you know, after the show, usually we go to Caro's. Yeah. But it's still the love moving. Yes. You know. But what is it that moved, you see? In the movement from the green room to the studio to Caro's to the airport, what moves? Well, so only body, right? Body moves. Well, I mean, one way to look at it is like a certain, you know, a certain vibration, a certain type of love, mm. the love they call you, mm. Mm. is moving. It doesn't seem to be like that. It seems more like the body moves and the love is already everywhere. But doesn't matter. Yeah, right. Yeah. I, I think if you're that close already, it's, you know, if it's love moving all the time, it's, yeah. it's pretty good. So what, what made you take that experience and put it in a book rather than, well, I know you tour and you, mm. you give talks, and, but well, what made you, you know, rather than do a television show, of yeah. course, how can you do one when this is happening? But, well, you know. the thing really started when I was in India um, quite a few years ago, eight years ago now, and I had the good fortune to stumble upon a teacher who was at that time almost completely unknown. His name is H. W. L. Punja. He's actually died um, a year and a half ago. He was the first teacher I had ever had who, instead of encouraging me to do more practices, more struggle, more effort, asked me with a certain kind of confrontational quality, who is the one trying to become enlightened? <clears throat> you know? right. Like this. Right. And I was like stunned. It never really occurred to me to uh -huh. question never mind about getting enlightened, who is the one trying to evolve spiritually? So, in really genuinely considering that, genuinely turning the attention back, in the abandonment of seeking, something revealed itself that has no name, no description. And no teacher, in a way. And no teacher, and no teaching. So a year later, he asked me to return to the West and to share this no teaching, no teacher, <laughs> no goal. Um, Which is hard to do because people want to, if you're talking, then you're the teacher. Yeah. So it's a tricky process. It is. It's more like an unteaching than yeah, a teaching. Yeah, right. An unwinding. So what occurred was, um, I realized after a couple of years that people were having very profound and deep realization in satsang. They would, it's very easy for anyone to look back into themselves and dis to discover there's no one there. But to live that way is very challenging. Well, we, there's a tremendous momentum other than that. Yeah. Actually, it's the, it's the simplest way. Yeah. Because you're not carrying around all the other shit, as yes. they say in New York. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not only New York. Yeah, probably it's said in a few other places, but where I grew up, it was said plenty. Okay. <laughs> London, too, yeah. Right. So, That's right, London, probably. Um, yeah, so... You're right, it is, wh when there is the resting as that, as silence, as love, it is revealed to be tremendously simple, effortless, but it's not habitual. So the book... Well, until it, until it is habitual. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so the book, 
is really um, more about living this than realizing or experiencing this. The right. book examines the habits that have constituted human life uh -huh. and allows those habits to relax back into their source so that the habits that create separation can dissolve back into a direct living of no separation. The habits that create judgment, pushing something outside, can dissolve into a recognition that all human experience is my own. But the book is more concerned with the embodiment and the living of it than any theoretical understanding of it. We think we've had enough of that by now. We've probably had enough talk shows, probably had enough books, probably <laughs> enough a lot of things, but still we have to go on and do it. It's an interesting process here. Mm -hmm. I mean, in a sense, living in, being infinite and living in a seemingly separate body. I mean, that's, that's the great experiment here. Mm -hmm. That's the great illusion, in a way. And that, that, I mean, that's the fun of it for all of us to come into that realization. Mm -hmm. You know, now and now and now and now and now. We speak yeah. the same language. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's really happening. Yeah, you know, really I, mean, I, I mean, you know, we see people like, like 25 times a year mm -hmm. who come in, you know, from all over. Mm -hmm. Some known, some unknown. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and just... They're just having extraordinary experiences. Mm. They're really far out. Mm. And we get to share that, so that's mm. why we feel so fortunate, you know, doing the show and all, mm. you know. Yes, it truly is happening. It's, it's actually by now seems to be unstoppable. There's uh, maybe at the beginning of this decade, there were a few teachers here and there. And maybe it was possible to say, well, that teacher is Indian and has a different heritage and a different name and different habits and different family background and me I'm this neurotic Western you know right. mixed up person but now if you look on the internet a great deal of the people teaching awakening are Westerners now with backgrounds the same as every other person so there is a tremendous snowball effect happening when when in this culture when we see that someone from our own culture is speaking this living this then there's no excuse to postpone. Yeah, it's, it's, it's right in your own backyard, as they say. <laughs> and it's happening. It's yeah, happening. I think that's... Uh, so, so when you travel around, you, see, you, you actually experience that mushrooming effect, that like snowball effect as you go. So in other words, you'll go to a city and there'll be 50 people, and the next time 100 people. Well, it's not just a numbers thing. Um, yes, that it happens to be true, but what's what is more stunning and moving to me is not so much the fact that more people come, but the same people who six months ago were still having doubt and resistance, six months later are just beaming like Buddha. Oh. You look in the eyes, there's really, there's no doubt in that seeing that there is nowhere further to go than that. There is just emptiness of thoughts and fullness of love. So that's what's really inspiring is to see how rapidly people just drop old habits and become love itself. And, and love, so, so and we've talked about this before and it's my experience that when that experience of clear seeing or oneness happens in a human body, it feels like love. That's how yeah. we would define it. Yeah. And how it manifests is joy and creativity. Yes. Is that your experience too? And everything else, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> well, there are a few things that we hope it doesn't manifest as things. Well, even those things seem to be okay. It's, uh, you know, Rumi wrote a beautiful poem called The Guest House. Do you know that poem? I think I've heard it, but why don't you say it again? Well, so actually, I wish you hadn't said it. I can't remember it. Two, yeah, right. You were bluffing, and I called you bluff. He says, he says this life is like a guest house. Huh? Um, whatever, I'm going to paraphrase, whatever shows up. Uh, None of our 250,000 people watching this show tonight know that poem, so go ahead. I well, think maybe I, if you do, but <laughs> whether it's a joy or a, or a depression, or a sadness, welcome everything. Open your doors and welcome it all to come. Even if it's been the most unenlightened, unspiritual, mundane, yucko thing, welcome it in. Hmm? And in that welcoming, everything is revealed to be holy. Everything is revealed to be a teacher. Everything is revealed to be a manifestation of God. Now that was my own rendering. <laughs> no, that was good. I know. I know. You were building up Stephen. I knew Ruby hadn't gone right where you were going. <laughs> yeah. I read enough of Ruby to go, he wasn't going there exactly. So. 
Rumi was a cool dude, yeah, a major he cool, was dude. A cool yeah. dude. So, how, how, how are people, you know, experiencing the book? Are they experiencing the book as like a real uh, inspiration to them, a real tool to help them have that experience? And well, the book, the, the um, main emphasis of the book is exactly what we've just spoken of that to rest in this, to recognize your true nature is not difficult, but in the living of it, what is revealed is where there is flinching or where there is resistance to what is arising. For example, if sadness or grief comes, if it's embraced, welcomed like a child, welcomed to its mother's heart, it doesn't obscure resting. If there's a flinching, a pushing away, that very flinching, not the thing that's arising, not the grief, but the flinching from the grief, mm -hmm. obscures our own nature from ourselves. The book is mostly about that, about breathing wakefulness more and more into everything, so nothing becomes unspiritual, nothing becomes separate from living this. So in other words, nothing is outside the, the, the energy, the love of God. Everything, there's only one energy, there's only one. That's, there is one. How could it be otherwise? Yes. <laughs> exactly, how could it be otherwise? <laughs> yes, yes. Even so-called evil is simply revealed to be resisted God. Hmm? God Misunderstood. not allowed, right. not allowed to flourish and flow. Yeah. Well, wow. all right, on that yeah. note, maybe we'll go to some music. Uh, Sudama, we'll be back with Arjuna in a couple of minutes, but we're going to do the second Sudama set, which is a didgeridoo ancestral invocation, which is written and performed by Sudama. Now, Sudama plays, we said he's a master musician. He's going to be playing a 12-string guitar, a regular guitar, this uh, didgeridoo. He plays all kinds of instruments. It's just, we'll try to have him back later on because, I mean, I've been over his house and there are instruments like everywhere. And he <laughs> plays them all just incredibly beautifully. Mm -hmm. So that's his first song. And then the second song is Shiv and the Grasshopper which is music by Sudama from a poem by uh, Rudyard Kipling, and it's performed by Sudama. And before I forget, let me remind you that if you're watching the show uh, uh, May uh, 28th in the Santa Barbara area, Sudama is going to give a benefit in a few days for the Kosovo refugees. So if anybody's interested in that, please let me know. Call me at 805-687-2053 or in Santa Barbara, 687-2053, and I'll give you all the information. And also, if you want to know where Arjun is traveling to when he's giving uh, workshops or lectures, call that number, 805-687-2053, and I'll give you all the information. Sudama, please.
It's the poem from the Jungle Book. It's about Shiva and Parvati.
the preserver Mahadeva Mahadeva He made it all Thorn for the camel Carrying to the cave This was least a little thing Wow, thank you, Sudama. That was fantastic. Wow. When Sudama, we were doing the sound check this morning, Sudama asked if the audience claps. I said, well, I don't know if you're going to make them clap, so I guess he did. <laughs> we have about, I guess, 25 or 30 people in the in studio audience here tonight. So I'm back on the set with Arjuna. So traditionally or throughout history, the, the recorded history as, as we know it, I guess, some of the tools have been like a meditation or a quiet, you know, time mm -hmm. and uh, I guess holy company or service or something like that. Mm -hmm. How do you bring those in to, the, to, to now? <laughs> um, <clears throat> well, let's see. It does seem to be that we are in a different frequency now for many reasons, one of which seems to be that the very stability of life on this planet is more in question, ecologically. There's more of a fragility now because yes. we've pushed it to the right. seeming brink of the... So, you know, somebody alive in Buddha's day could listen to the teachings and, you know, take a few decades, maybe a few lifetimes. Today, there's it's, no time. It's not so clear if that luxury is available. <laughs> so there does seem to be really a quickening. Hmm? And you know, really, in, at least in the way that I facilitate this with people, it comes down really to a very simple decision in this moment now. And you don't need to prepare for a decision. Like if you climb to the top of the diving board, the highest diving board, Certainly there may be a period, it could go on for a long time, of looking down, oh, I don't know, it's so deep, and you know, letting the other people pass, and then plucking up courage. You, you could spend a long time in that in-between. But finally, to jump doesn't take time. Huh? It just, <gasps> and jump. Right. And then in that jumping, and in that... There's an experience. In that hitting the water, there is the immediate evaporation of fear, because... Now, I've done it, then you run back up and you can jump all afternoon then from the... Or I ain't doing that again. <laughs> Thank God I did it once. But no. Well, except you see in this case... No, I understand about this particular that's case. Right. In this particular case, people seem to... Um, want to come back. Want to just rest there, you see. So, I don't know. You know, it's hard to say whether this moment of decision to just let go of the story of my life just to let go of my agenda and my beliefs and discover what is left when I evaporate. It's hard to say whether that requires preparation or whether it's just the preparation... Simple twist of fate sometimes. Yeah, it could be the preparation just happens to precede it, but... It looks like it's, there's preparation sometimes. My teacher used to say about this, he used to say, a crow comes and lands on the branch of a coconut tree and in the same moment, the coconut falls. Yeah, what? Yeah. It doesn't mean necessarily right. that the coconut was caused by the crow. Right. Yeah. Well, any explanation we give has three dots before it and three dots after it. Yeah. I mean, it's all, you yeah. know, cutting a piece of the infinite out and trying to explain it. Yes. Right. <laughs> and, and we do that on the show. We do that with words. We do that in your book. You know, Sadama does it with his music. I mean, everybody, in a way, cuts a piece of the infinite and says, this is the story. Yeah. But to know that... There are, you know, it's like mm. it comes from infin infinity and goes to infinity. Mm. You know, it's like, mm. And you just, it's like playful mm. in that, you know, whatever way you're manifesting, it's a playful explanation of the infinite. Mm. It's such a relief to not need to know. Huh? Exactly. To not yeah, need I mean, to think of all the weight out of your backpack. <laughs> you know, you walk around, why do I feel so heavy? You know, what? well, shit, get some of the stuff out of your backpack and you feel a little lighter. All the right. concepts, all the ideas, who you yes. are, what you should do, what yeah. lineage you're from, what, you know, all the traditions, you know, you know, on and on and on. And then you go, I feel heavy. 
Yeah. I've been practicing mm. spiritual prayers for 45,000 years, mm. and I feel heavy. <laughs> you know, it's like, well, <laughs> how, many, mm. hey, you know, how many ideas, how many concepts mm. are you carrying in this moment? Mm. And it's like, mm. wow. You know? mm. And it's such, a, it's such an unspeakable joy to see people coming from all these different backgrounds and different ways that they have really diligently and sincerely Absolutely. been working and seeking just meeting in this ocean where there is no separation, where, it, where one teacher and another are just blended into presence. It's, I'm just in love with this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you're, just in, you're just in love. I mean, it's like interesting because like in a way, there are bios in the, uh, on our website, you know, of all the guests. You know, we have all the seasons listed on one of the pages. I think you looked at the website or somebody, mm. or Kate might, one of your, you know, one of your associates. Hmm. And we have a, a seasons page that has all the shows. This is the 79th show. And we have them all in order with all the guests and an explanation. Hmm. And then we also have a guest page where we have all the guests and, you know, Arjuna Road relaxing into clear sing. Hmm. And the only thing I could write about myself was Alan is and three <laughs> dots. It's like, you know, I mean, you know, I, I, mean, I know where I could grew up. Could I have up. that biography too? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> you want that one in there too? But then we'll be right near each other but here's under the, thing. the A's. If it, if it says Alan <laughs> is and then it says Arjuna is, what is the difference between what comes after the dots in yours and what comes after the dots in mine? Ah. <laughs> right, exactly. That's love. Yeah, exactly. That is love. What yeah, and one of the difference? three dots before, I mean, it's just, mm. it's a way of describing. Mm. I mean, all these things and all your books and, well, your one book and all the books are... Oh, I'm uh, having more books. You do? You yeah. do writing more? There's one coming out soon. Yeah, it's called what? How About Now. Wow. Very, very appropriate to your wow. introduction. How About Now? That's funny. Never mind next year. You know, it's funny because I didn't really know that. And then the introduction was basically, yeah. let's do it now. What are we mm. waiting for? Mm. That's funny. Mm. So, I mean, are you pretty well into writing that one? Is it coming? It's done. It's done. Mm. Done, edited, and ready to come ready out. Ready to go. Wow. Mm. So we need another. We're going to need another easel with your other next Also time. coming. There's a third one called The Wizard of Om. <laughs> it, it's, a, it's a kind of um, um, Advaita Celestine prophecy. <laughs> It's a novel. Oh, really? A novel about awakening. Oh, it's theoretically fiction in some way. And when you say a novel, oh, actually stuff, fiction. Fiction. Yeah. yeah, it's it's a story with a car chase and a sex scene and the whole thing. But wow. But the dramatic tension so is: will the guy wake the, up or not? We'll, we'll do the movie race <laughs> okay. right here with your crew. Yeah. Right. <laughs> All right. We're going to stay till after ten thirty. Uh, so that's exciting. So you're, I mean, a lot of. A lot's coming through you at this point, it seems. And it's really like that, you know? It's, it's what, I love what you said earlier. You said it shows up as love and creativity, but the creativity really flows when there is no one creating. When, when the, the doer has been put to bed, then, uh, then the party starts. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, it's interesting because, I mean, you use the word like becoming nothing. I always thought of writing a book, becoming nothing. Ah. But, you know, it, it's like... All these words are not true explanations no. of it. I mean, so you can never get it just right. Isn't it funny? I mean, because you go from, actually, when you become nothing, you're everything. You realize you're everything. And yeah. then it's like, you know, yeah. you know how does, what does that yeah. mean? But this is the endless quest of mysticism, is to try and describe that which cannot be described, and yet one has to give it a shot just in... You know, I've been, more and more, it's like it's time for us to play together. Mm. You know what I mean? And mm. how that manifests. I'm not saying it doesn't manifest in a book or a talk show, because obviously we've been using enough words to, you know, bury the set. But, you know, but it's somehow, it's, it's more like in a, in a playfulness, in a childlikeness. You yeah. know what I mean? Instead of the seriousness of the business of enlightenment, yeah. the seriousness of the business of writing a book or doing a show. Or it, you know, mm. in a way, so things have to be done. I mean, you know how much we did to make this show work right. Yeah. You know, it looks like we're just sitting here, two yeah. dopes on the set doing this thing. But I mean, there are, you know, like 20 people involved with mm. all over the place, camera people and audio people. Mm. And it took a lot of pre-production because it's a live show to get it so mm. it looks natural. Right. But, you know, it's, it's interesting how that works. You know, I, I was in um, Fairfield, Iowa, and uh, somebody was um, saying, we, we were speaking, and I was saying, you really, you don't have to do anything. He said, well, why am I here? He said, I've come to your therapy. I said, I don't do any therapy. Right. He said, I've come to your teaching. I said, I, I said, I'm not teaching anything. We went on like this. And he said, well, what are you doing? And I thought, oh. uh, Arjuna um, is. You got it and, now. And I said, I said, tickling. <laughs> right, yeah. I'm tickling. And, only, you're not doing, you know, and, and you're not doing that either. I mean, you could have been tickling. doing... <laughs> right, exactly. You know what I mean? It's mm. like any word we use is like one... 
yeah. you know, getting closer to it, but yeah. you're just being, and you happen to be here. Do you want to be here with me? Right. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. So when you went back there, I mean, like these are people who were involved with Maharishi for a long time in Fairfield. Mm. Were you in, in their auspices or that? O also, yes. Yeah, you many, were, I mean, you were back. It, you, many you years were, ago, right? yeah, yeah. So you, you went back there as like, in a way, another tickler. He's a tickler, yeah. now you're a tickler. A new tickler in town. Right, yeah. a new tickler in town. <laughs> now, how do they respond to that when you go to the tickler's home base or something? What oh, uh, they're tickled. <laughs> <laughs> tickled, whose funny boat is the question? They're absolutely tickled. No, you know, the thing is... Do people, I mean, is there a certain amount of resistance? Is there a certain amount of concepts about that at this well, point? Well, yes, there is. Ne never mind just about that group or that teacher, because... Um, Wherever one goes, the people who are going to come and listen to someone speaking about awakening right now are people who have a certain kind of maturity. Yeah? And yes, there is among every group, whether it's followers of Yogananda or Maharishi Mahesh Yogi or Rajneesh or anything, there is a certain resistance because because their teacher has taught them practices, there's a feeling, if I stop seeking and practicing, there's a disloyalty. But, you know, it's interesting because we've been just tuning in. I'm just, and just invite people to tune in to the energetic frequency of their teacher. And I ask, when you really tune in and connect in your heart, does your teacher want you to remain struggling or does your teacher want you to be free? And once people relax, they realize that the whole purpose of the teacher's life was for them to blossom, not right. to remain a bud forever. Mm? Right. Yeah, we've said a lot on the show the guru's job is to make themselves obsolete. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And if they're not making themselves obsolete, something's wrong. Yeah, well. And you know, it's all, there's only really one guru. Huh? It's, it's everywhere. It manifests in different forms, but it doesn't matter if the preparation is done through one vehicle and then the the almost getting there is with another vehicle and right, the final absolutely. sword cut yeah i mean there's no like you know like checkboard i mean who cares yeah you know? it's all the same right yeah. exactly we're all working for the same boss we are all we we the way i would put it we all are the same yes. i mean you know yeah. like even like us and a boss is a separation yes, I know. yeah and, i mean it's like you know if <laughs> you we can go round and round <laughs> But it's interesting, fun. you'll say it one way and I'll say it, and then you'll say it. And We're the just other. tickling each other. That's right, it's really powerful. <laughs> mm. Yes, it's a very, very beautiful time. It's really, it's, it's also such a blessed, a blessed, blessed, honored life to be able to travel to these cities and to be present, to be a witness to what these people, every, all over the place, shifting from seeking. And sometimes, you know, it's so explosive. When someone has 30 years, 40 years, and then... Grinding it out and, and let go. Yes. <laughs> there was one particular man I remember who was, um, he's the director of the Open Center in New York. And he's done everything. I thought I was a, you know... Right, yeah, you've hard, had quite a... Hard quite case, a but history. this guy, he puts me to, makes me an amateur. He's done everything. <laughs> I mean, professionally qualified at everything really? under the sun. Really, really. And he came for a, a private meeting in New York. And I simply, with a certain kind of passion, asked him to find the one who was trying to get free, just to look for the one who was going through all this effort to be liberated. And you should have seen this guy. It was like, it was like a child on Christmas morning. His eyes lit wow, up. Wow, he got it. Oh, wow. And then... Got it. This was only like 15 minutes into the meeting, but you know, we had scheduled an hour and a half. So I took him out into the Central Park, which right. was like there. This, he was in utter ecstasy, you know? Wow. And so, it, it, tears. Even during the mugging. No, <laughs> Central Park, I grew up there thinking. It's like after 20 minutes, either you're mugged or you got to get out of there. So you guys were very lucky. Oh, but you see, this is the beautiful thing. The mugging only shows up before you recognize the blessedness. Then uh -huh. the, the muggers just are transformed into angels after that. Yeah, that's what they told he me. Was walking around, <laughs> he was walking around Central Park, tears streaming, just in love with everyone. And to be present to that, to be a midwife, Right. For that birth, I don't know who to thank, but it's really, it's a blessed, blessed yeah. situation. Just grateful. Yeah. 
I know. You know it's like, mm. I mean, the feeling of gratefulness doesn't have really mm. someone that needs or yes. something that needs to yes. be graded or yes. something. Yeah. You know. Yes. People sometimes come to satsang and they say, "Oh, thank you," and I say, "I'm trying to thank the same one that you thank, but I can't find their address or their email or anything. I don't know who to send the thank you." When card you find to. out, you give them my name. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of people right. <laughs> waiting in line. <laughs> right. Who to thank? Yes. Right. So, so you find that that real connection mm. is just starting to happen, just like incrementally more, just unbelievable. See, because you know, for us, it's like you know, doing the show. Mm. You know, people come in every two weeks. And we hear these stories, yeah. but. Actually, we've been talking about you know going out on the road and going to the sacred sites and just starting uh, to film outside. But uh, you know, for us, we don't get to go to New, you know North yeah. Carolina, New Jersey. And well, then let me be a bringer of very good news because really? it's everywhere and it's very strong. It's wow. everywhere, at least in my limited experience. Everywhere I go, massive explosion mm. of giving up seeking. You know, it's interesting because in a way we do see it. Because I mean, now we're on the Bridging Heaven and Earth show. I mean, it was on in a lot of big cities. Mm. You know, like the Santa Fe's and San Francisco's and Marin County, but now it's getting on in Gillette, Wyoming. Mm. You know, uh, Little Rock, Arkansas. Mm. I mean, places that you go. You know, mm. three cowboys want to watch Bridging Heaven and Earth. It's like, <laughs> hello. You know, are there well, are there really people there? <laughs> and yet we're getting all these emails and letters from all over, and it's like, wow. So, well, I mean, we see it in that, you know, so you could pass that along. That it's well, really I'd like to say to the people in Little Rock, Arkansas, you are that. <laughs> it's well, happening. Love itself. <laughs> so in two months, they're gonna, there's going to be a big outpouring. <laughs> they're not live now. <laughs> okay. Santa Barbara, you are that. Santa Barbara, give up the search. It's, right. all it's here. It's here. Come on down to the next show and we'll all play together. <laughs> yeah. so, so these books are just really coming through you. And, and is there a fourth one in the, in the hamper? <laughs> Take off the pressure, please. Huh? Um, no, the, the, the novel is as far as we've got we've right got here. Yeah. As far as we've got. Yeah. All right, so I guess, you know, once again, coming to the end of the show. and it's uh, so quickly. Huh? Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. How an hour goes When you're back. having fun, time yeah, goes really. so fast. So, you know, I just wanted to really thank uh, Arjuna and Sudama for coming. And I mean, like, we've all been saying like sudama has been saying in his way like that the video of that heart and that love and dedicated to the oneness that that promotional video that animated video and and arjuna and i were talking and sudama was playing and then that video just manifested that the oneness exists the oneness is love we are that we are you're here i'm here we're all here it's time it's now and there is no reason that that experience can't be made real for all of us. So please contact us. If you're touched by this, contact us, because this helps us in the love, helps us in the inspiration. So good night. God bless you. You are that. <laughs> hmm.